Hi, everyone. You are tuning in to WDRB Media, the voice of the community, offering double the inspiration mm -hmm. and double the information. I'm Alexis V. Wolf of the Fiery Sword Global Ministries, and this is the Fiery Sword Radio Show. And this is Sandy Renner. And you can find me at sandyrenner.net. Mm. So last week, I think, Sandy, we finished talking, I think we ended the show talking about forgiveness and what that looks like. And for those of you guys who didn't get uh, to hear that show, we were talking about how we don't ever have to ask for forgiveness. We need only to repent, mm -hmm. turn from our wicked ways and receive that forgiveness. Receive it. And so we've been talking about relationships, relationships with God. We've been talking about the last, what, four weeks or so. We've talked yes. about the kingdom of God, what that looks like, what a relationship with God looks like and how we can cultivate mm, that. Yes. So today, I guess we're going to start getting into what is our second relationship is or actually in the earth, our first relationship is the relationship with our parents. And so before we can ever really understand how to go into a real and righteous and holy relationship with a male or a female, a husband or wife, is to really understand what are some of our broken areas in life? Because we all have brokenness. We yes. all have areas that need mending. I don't care how good your childhood was when you were growing up or how great your parents were. Listen, they are broken pieces because parents are broken. Our siblings are broken. Yes. We all come because we come into the earth sinful. We come into the mm -hmm. sin nature. Therefore, things are going to happen, even if they're just misperceived situations. Because correct. sometimes we can hold things against people, against our parents, because they did or said something we didn't like as a child. And what they intended was not how we received it. So therefore, there's some brokenness mm -hmm. that needs mending. And so we want to talk today about what it, how do we mend those fences with our parents? and get that relationship right. How do we honor our mother and our father, even when we have horrible mothers and fathers? And so when we can get that relationship right, then and only then can we go healthily, is that a word? Healthily it is now. Into, <laughs> it is now healthily into a relationship with our future husband and wife. Take it from there, Sandy. Well, like you said, our first interaction with human beings is with our parents, and especially our mother. And all of you out there listening know we mothers are to blame for everything. <laughs> so just suck it up, sisters, and let's move on with it, okay? Love it. Uh, I love it. Uh, my parents were, um, they were good people as far as that, but they were alcoholics. And so they were very broken. And it took me till I was in my 40s to find total healing from all mm. of the broken in places and uh, I, what we would like to see is that it not take that long for some of you so Alexis and I have been through the the ringer mm -hmm. with relationships mm -hmm. obviously and we have about 60 years of, of ministry between the two yes of us. so about and 40 and she's some 20 broken something. relationships between us um, with parents and ex-husbands yes. and so we we know a thing or two because we've learned a thing or two yes. from trial and error and when I minister to people, I find myself having to take them back probably to their early childhood because that's where a lot of our breaking comes mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the most important things we can uh, say biblically is very early in the Old Testament, and thank God we're not under the law. We're not trying right. to take you back under the law. We serve through grace. Hallelujah. But uh the Ten Commandments still have moral value and have strong value to us. And one of the Ten Commandments was honor your father and your mother, but it comes with the promise that your life journey go well with you. So many of us are walking through a lot of broken places because we have not honored mm -hmm. our parents. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alexis will often say, well, um, they weren't good parents. <laughs> That's not what God said. He didn't say if they were good parents or right. they were perfect parents or that they never did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe they abandoned you. Maybe they just dumped you on someone's doorstep and walked away. Uh, that happens to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, but he said to honor your mother and your father, 
that life goes well with you. So if your life has not been going well, maybe you need to re-examine mm-hmm. your relationship out of your heart with your parents and learn some walk in some forgiveness. Absolutely, you know, because I think it's always good for us to be aware that we need to reassess from time to time. You know, yes. that's just not because you had horrible parents or that you're a horrible person. Sometimes it's just because it's like things aren't going quite well yes. or the way we think they should, and we need to reevaluate our own hearts. We need yes. to reevaluate how did I get here? And I think that's always a good question. Not how did I get here, but Father, show me how yes. did I get here and what is the root of these issues? So we can often see generational curses. We can see mm-hmm. cultural curses in relationships. We can just kind of see different patterns. So it's good for us to assess why am I divorced 15 times? Yes. Why am I twice divorced? Or why have I been in this one marriage for 30 or 40 years and I've been miserable for 30 or 40 years? Yes. Why is that? I'm trying to do what's right in accordance with God. I'm trying to not get divorced. I'm trying to stay married. Married, but I think we're already off track on that because we're just trying to stay married. We're trying to do a thing, but we're not saying what is the heart of the problem? What has really transpired to make me so miserable? Yes. And so in going back to those childhood relationships, uh, even with your siblings, sometimes we can have such a discord with our siblings. Yes. Especially when you have uh, at least one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Some people, Sandy has four siblings. She has yes. four sisters. And so those can mess us up. Yes. I, I'm going to share this little, little bit tidbit the other day. So the other day, and I don't even know what started the conversation, <laughs> but um, my husband, Michael, and he, as I've said before, he is my ordained mate. He is my prophesied husband. Like he's the one. Um, and so the, we've been married 18 years and happily so. We've had, a, you know, we, everybody has ups and downs, but primarily we've had a really good and strong marriage. We don't argue and fight. We, we talk through things, but you know. Does he close the toothpaste tube? Sometimes. Okay, there if you go, like see? It. Life's not perfect. But I'll tell you, um, and again, those who know my story, and I think I talked about it a little bit, maybe in our first or second session, that my first husband left me with a note on the coffee table. But I never felt, and there was a lot of brokenness, and then I dealt with that. I went through my seven years of rebellion. But by the time I married Michael, because I've always been in love with him since I was 15, I've always loved him. And I don't mean I was pining for him while I was married. I'm saying it was just always there under the surface. And mm-hmm. so when I was free to to um, go, for, go for that, pursue that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um so the other day we were talking and I had asked him to go to the store to get us a Cersei because we wanted something sweet. Don't tell Ray. Her husband's a workout trainer. Um, and so he he really didn't want to go. He's really tired, but it's like, mm, we need it. So you go because otherwise I'm going to have to get on, take a shower and do this and do that. And too much hullabaloo. So by the time he actually, he drug his feet and drug his feet, and God bless him. Um, and so Jesus. I was like, are you going to go? You know, just those real husband and wife moments where yes. you just, it's just everyday life. And so finally he got up a little begrudgingly and he went to, the, and he wanted a Cersei too, right? But anyway, uh-huh. and for those who are not Southern, which I'm not Southern, but I do love that word. That is a Southern term for we want to treat. That's yes. a Cersei. Uh, just a little FYI. Um, and so he got up and he left. He didn't say goodbye. He didn't say, is there something else you need from the store? And there was something else I needed from the store. So I thought, hmm, he's mad. Okie doke. (laughs) So I thought, well, let me just pick up the phone. And I called him and I said, I was going to say, hey, I need some milk or whatever. He didn't answer his phone because a lot of times when he's at work, he'll turn the ringer off. And so he forgets to turn the ringer back on. Um, So I thought, okay, I'll just text him. I texted him. I need some milk. Where are you? I need some milk. Um, And so I was like, clearly he's not looking at his phone. So he comes home and I was a little snippy. I'm like, you didn't answer the phone. Why didn't you answer your text? (laughs) Why didn't you care enough to say, honey, do you need anything else from the store? And I was really, I'm going somewhere with this. So I was kind of having a little Alexis moment. You know what I mean? Um, And he looked at me like, why are you talking to me like that? And I thought, okay, I know that look. No words are necessary. That's great when you're married that long that no words are necessary. Um, So I collected myself. Thank you, Jesus. And I thought, (laughs) again, reassessing, reassessing. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. And so we're going to get back to parents in a minute, but this is a good story. Yes. Um, Because I had to say, why am I acting like this? I know my husband, you know, big deal. He was irritated because he's tired and he didn't want to go to the store. So I take a few minutes and I go into the living room where he's sitting and I apologize. I said, I I know that I kind of overreacted a little bit, 
but let me explain to you. And something came out of my mouth. I haven't even shared it with Sandy yet. What came out of my mouth was actually revelatory to me. And it's probably not revelatory to anybody else, but I'm here to tell you, I looked at him and I said, I guess sometimes that disturbs me when you get up and you leave and you don't say anything or you don't answer the phone or you don't respond to a text. It makes me feel abandoned. Mm. I thought, All right. Huh. Or I said disconnected. It makes me feel disconnected from you, which then led into it makes me feel abandoned. abandoned. And I thought that was really interesting because I have never felt like he was going to abandon me. I've never, yeah, because we're just always, he's the one with whom I was in love. We were the ones that were supposed to be together. And I knew that. And mm -hmm. I've never really felt that. But it, lo and behold, I have felt that deep down. Yeah. And I have found 2020 to be really revelatory. And we can look around the world going, there's a lot of revelation coming to surface. Oh, yes. and there's a lot of junk being exposed. <clears throat> and so funny enough, oddly, in my own personal life, it's like, huh, what's that? Wow. And so as I kept talking, I said, I think there's some residue from my first marriage. Hmm. Mm -hmm, you think? I, I never felt, like, like I said, I, and he abandoned me, but I never felt like that crossed over because by the time Michael and I married, I had dealt with all of that in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the grace of God allows us to deal with stuff little by little. I mean, it comes I, in layers. It comes in layers. And you and I have talked about that a lot. But that was actually, as I spoke the words, it was revelatory to me that there was still some abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was very subtle. It wasn't like I'm constantly panicking that he's going to leave me. But that was another layer that had yes. to be dealt with because I needed to go, okay, I need to grow in that area. Yes. And so what's happening also, just to give you a little backstory, Michael has been working crazy hours and his job has become very demanding. And I'm always with the kids. And so life gets busy with ministry and kids and dogs and cats. And, you know, by the time he comes home. So we hadn't really been super connected, like being able to spend time together. Right. Um, and so that exacerbated the, the issue that brought that up. But I tell you, I found that I find that I am grateful when God reveals those things, because mm -hmm. even after being married over 18 years and being somebody who's walked with God and I know to deal with these things, layers, yes, layers. And God allows us. So that's why we're talking about going back to the relationship with your parents. And we are not psychologists or psychiatrists, no. but common sense. Yes. Common sense says if things are really going wrong, we need to look back so that we can forge ahead with prosperity. Yes. With a mentality of healing and wholeness instead of just continuing in that, that road of brokenness and brokenness mm -hmm. and brokenness and brokenness. Yes. Uh, this is what I love about working with Alexis. We, we think a lot of like, mm -hmm. and even before you began, <laughs> yeah, a little scary. Uh, but even before you started your story, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, talk about how to take inventory properly. Oh, I love that. And That's so you, you really kind of touched on some of that. And so we never should look at ourselves under condemnation. Right. Christ does not look at us under condemnation. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus and who are led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. If you're led by your emotions or your feelings or uh, past failures, then there's going to be a lot of condemnation. Right. Then you just pile on more trouble on top of yeah, trouble. Yeah, then you get angry. And so, but <laughs> it is a out. good and healthy thing to say, okay, so uh, Michael did put the lid on the toothpaste this time, but he walked out the door without saying, I love I you, love darling. <laughs> uh, so, so why am I feeling so so anxious mm -hmm. and out of sorts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and she did the right thing she stopped and she evaluated her feelings under under the spirit under mm -hmm. the spirit of god because had she not done it under the spirit of god that feeling of abandonment would have ruled the rest of the yes, day it would. but instead she took inventory so i encourage you when you start reacting out of pain or anger or frustration and you really question yourself and say so why why do i act the way i act mm -hmm. i went through several years of doing that why did I behave the way I behaved in that circumstance? But don't do it under condemnation. Do it under honesty mm -hmm. to God, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, show me me under your grace so that I don't beat myself up, right. but I can say, wow, 
this stemmed from and it usually goes back to something for women they don't ever want to really be like their mamas they want to be like their daddies and for boys kind of strange they thing. don't want to be like either one of them <laughs> and they just want to rebels. run away <laughs> uh, yeah rebels. and then we end up just like them so yeah. Yeah. we have to go back and try to restore some healthiness mm-hmm. in our relationship with our parents even if they've already gone both my parents have been gone for a long time mm-hmm. so i even find myself having to make peace with the memory and so that's a good thing to talk about memories. We, we talked about our soul being our will and our mm-hmm. intellect and our emotions, mm-hmm. our feelings. But there's actually two more components of our soul, and it is our memories and our yes. imagination. And when any one of those parts of our soul is broken through wrong relationships, wrong choices, and a lot of it is our stored memories. Mm -hmm. And you know, the great thing is God never takes our memories because without a memory, there is no reason for testimony. Right. And so we have to go back and let the Holy Spirit take us through some difficult memories. I certainly had many of them. Uh, And as the Holy Spirit will heal those memories, then the feelings or the emotions associated with those memories, they will begin to feel more whole and Mm. well satisfied. And so then you can begin to honor your parents, not say everything they did was okay, because it wasn't wasn't okay what my parents did. But as I let the Holy Spirit heal those things, mm-hmm. Alexis, then I begin to find wholeness in that. And I can say, you know what? My parents did some things wrong, but you know what? They did some things right. Maybe your parents left you on someone's doorstep and you said, what's right about that? Mm. Maybe they realized they could never take good, proper care of you. So try to find the right, even in the midst of the wrong. Take inventory how that has wounded you. Submit that to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I promise you, he will put people in your life to help you walk through those dark places. Mm -hmm. And then as you mature in Christ, is where Alexis found herself yesterday. She's a matured woman in Christ Jesus. But she had to use that to walk through that place and find where that irritation came Where's from. the error in me? That's yes. exactly right. Because, you know, when we think about when, when the Apostle Paul said, uh, forgetting what is behind, mm-hmm. forgetting what is, what's already happened, that doesn't mean memory loss. And I'm so glad no that you memory said loss. And, and Sandy has this great revelation on that. And we'll, we'll get to that. It, it's, you know, eventually. In proper we'll get to, time. Um, but it's really interesting because we do want to play the blame game. That's what bitterness does. Yes. That's what unforgiveness does. That's why we spent several weeks talking about mm-hmm. what is forgiveness and that you're already forgiven. And if you're already forgiven, so are they. So are your parents. Absolutely. And you and I both, Sandy, and I mean, I was in prison ministry for a really long time, and I guess I still am, but not not as actively as I used to be. But going into the prisons, and why are they there? So much, so much unresolved brokenness and yes. heartache and Anger. rejection and resentment, abandonment, worthlessness. Oh, my gosh. Like, the stemming from their childhood absolutely stemming from and the stories that i heard and mm. having to then respond to them how do you honor your mother and your father or them asking me okay so i mean oh my gosh i can't some of the stories i can't even repeat them no but there have been stories like one particular lady a beautiful 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 woman um her father got her pregnant her father would wow. drug her, that the father got all of the kids, she had many, many siblings, and got them addicted to alcohol and drugs. And <clears throat> she said she would remember waking up with an IV in her arm because they were pumping, I don't, and I don't know drugs, but like heroin or I don't know, whatever goes through the IV, pump. <laughs> and the, the pump. And so like he would pump drugs into them and get them drunk, and then he would get them pregnant, or at least she got pregnant, but he would have sex with all of them, either molestation or actual rape, however far that went. Um, and then the mother would turn and call, in fact, for her specifically, the mother turned and called her a whore because her father drugged her and got her pregnant. Yes. What? But we have to honor our mother and our father. What does that look like, Sandy? How do you honor a parent like that? Um, I, I have very close people in my life that their mother or their father abandoned them or they don't know their mother or their father. I mean, story after story. These are people's lives. Yeah. God, show me what that looks like. So, Sandy, speak on that. How do we conduct ourselves in honoring without agreeing with how they treated us? 
my mother, uh, she drank heavily when she drank, and when she did, she turned into this whole another person. I'm mm-hmm. serious. Um, one time, I even told some of my friends that it was my aunt let out from the crazy house because I didn't want to admit that was my mom. And you know what? They believed me because uh-huh. my mother, even her looks would change. She would turn into mm-hmm. this very violent person. And so we, we lived in a very, very violent home. Um, and it was very ugly. And there's many things that I would not even tell today because I have no need to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and some things I wouldn't say because my four sisters, uh, I, I would never want to bring them any shame or embarrassment or pain that they may not have dealt through and uh, have to relive that by hearing me tell this on, on radio. So I'm careful what I do tell, but my mother was very violent, and it took me many, many years. And I was, I mean, when I was 16, I would think of ways to kill her. I mean, seriously, I didn't know Jesus. And that's then, a obviously. very natural thought process. Yes, it's a very. I mean, normal. I really think mm-hmm. that through. But by the time I was forty, and this is my point, it took me till I was forty years of age to get to a place in Christ where I could say, I really forgive her. I really don't hate her anymore because I understand that I can only love her through Christ. Mm-hmm. But I had to relinquish the pain. It is real. That pain is real. And so how could I honor a woman in a drunken stupor sticking butcher knives at our throat and doing other horrible things? I couldn't. And neither can you. Mm -hmm. But through Christ Jesus, when I realized that Jesus forgave me for plotting to kill my mother. Jesus forgave me for talking ugly to her. Jesus forgave me when I hit her and one time. Her death. <laughs> and yes. And so, uh, you know, when I realized the forgiveness that I had received, then it's easier to mm. give that forgiveness <clears throat> because that is all that will heal a broken soul. Absolutely. Like absolutely. That is the only thing that will heal. Even Christ cannot heal you till you let go of the unforgiveness. Right. He For, wants to. And that is the forgetting what is behind. Yes. It's not memory erasing. No. It's saying, I'm choosing to lay that thing down. Yes. Get because it. before, if God had just said, I'll take those horrible memories from you. Uh, wow. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. But then I couldn't then sit what? here and give you a testimony of the grace of God, That's right. forgetting <laughs> those things which are behind, meaning I will not let them keep me going into my future. And that's what hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness will do. It will keep you from reaching forward and pressing into that mark yes. of the high calling yes. of Christ Jesus. So I had to relinquish that. And what, what the Lord explained to me is when you have been bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. It's like always falling on jagged edges when you have that memory. Mm -hmm. So instead of having the memory of falling on jagged edges, he gives me the, I keep my memory, but he takes the edges away Mm -hmm. and it doesn't cut into my soul. Yeah. Yeah. And so then it doesn't hurt anymore because I have given forgiveness. I have received forgiveness. The edges of that brutality is gone. You know, it really is a difference, and I've said this a lot to people, it's the difference between a scar and a wound. A yes. wound is still problematic. Yes. A scar shows deliverance. Yes. That scar just said, and you want to see those scars. Because, what, what's it a, really shows victory. Right. Wasn't it Jacob that wrestled with the the, spear, the uh, angel of the angel? Lord, which was actually the, the Lord, and he wrestled with him, and he said, I've won. What was his victory? He had victory over his past. He had yes. victory because he resolved himself, and he always had a limp. He I was love, known as a trickster. Right. Oh, yes. he, was, he was a shady dude. <laughs> he was a shady <laughs> dude. And, you know, that's what's so brilliant about God. You know, I've been using the word brilliant a lot lately, and that has not been in my vocabulary in a very long time. But be that the brilliance of God to allow us to heal, that is forgetting. Healing is forgetting. It's not saying it's erased. It's saying I have healed from that. Look at the power of God. Look at the grace of God. How, like you said, how can we show the magnitude of the grace of God if we completely had our memories erased? Because yes. then, what is it? If we erase history, we make we have the no same future. mistake. Well, we have no future because we keep making the same mistakes. Yes. But if we can remember it in so much as it is a stepping stone to being better. Yes. And, you know, when we forgive, and I've been thinking about this as well. Um, one, it says those who have been forgiven. We talked about this about a week or two ago. 
Those who had been forgiven much, loved much. That's what Jesus said to the yes. woman that just bathed him and, and they wanted to kick the woman out. He said, but those who have been forgiven much, love much. Our biggest problem, of course, out of the body of Christ, but our biggest problem within the body of Christ is that we don't know how much we've been, we've been forgiven because we are so high-minded. It says, yes. don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. But what are we doing as a collective group in the body of Christ? It is our downfall because that pride says, I am better than so-and-so. Yes. I would never. Mm. And when you start a sentence oh with, I goodness. would never, you don't Hold understand. On. You do not understand how sinful that you have been, that Christ has had to forgive you. He died for you. He died for me. He died for everyone ever to touch this planet. Yes. And, and so when we, I think the first place we have to do is say, God, show me how much I've been forgiven. So that in that understanding, I can then love much. You know, my parents had tumultuous growing up years. <clears throat> they had things that were unresolved as parents. You know, they were broken. They came together. That, that just exacerbated the brokenness. And then yes. uh, my sister and I had issues. And there was some stuff that went on in the household um, that caused some damage. Certainly not like other households. I mean, I don't have anything like what you talk about. But brokenness breeds brokenness. And I want us to pick up here next week yes, and really talk about, because if I started now, we won't finish the time. Right. So, <laughs> but we want to pick up with how do we get past that brokenness and how do we understand the level of our own forgiveness that Christ had to extend to us yes. so that we could then give back that love to someone else. Because on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Absolutely. And we think people know what they're doing when they do stupid stuff and mean stuff and horrible stuff because of the demon, demonic forces in this earth. They don't, they think they know what they're doing. Yes. They don't know what they're doing because Christ said so. That's right. So listen, you guys have been tuned into the fiery sword. Yes. We are WDRB media, the voice of the community, giving double the information and double the inspiration. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Johnny McElveen for that great intro and awesome. exit music. Johnny McElveen can be reached at 803-397-4931. He is a musician and a producer. He's MC Music Recording Studio and Music Production. Again, that is Johnny McElveen. And I hope you guys will tune in next week, Sunday mornings, 8 a.m. Get up yes. bright early and start that day off right. And you, we'll see you then. We'll see you then. Be blessed. <laughs>